over in America, Donald Trump uh, has announced uh, in stark contrast that he's going to end the twisted web of left wing lies that are taught to American kids and going to bring in uh, good old fashioned lessons in patriotism. So there's uh, a difference in what's going on over there and here. Uh, I wonder which uh, our next guest thinks is the right way forward. Let's talk to Chris McGovern. He's uh, in charge of the campaign for real education. Hello, Chris. Hello there. Uh, what's your feeling about this? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, I, 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 I guess it's a good idea to teach kids about same-sex relationships and LGBT rights, but is it a massive priority? And what do you think about Donald Trump saying that he thinks it's more important that kids uh, are not f taught left-wing dogma, but instead taught about patriotism? Well, let me come clear about my position. Um, I, I sat with Michael Gove to write the current national curriculum for history. I also advise Margaret Thatcher and John Major on previous national curriculums. So I probably have more experience of writing history national curriculums than anybody in the country. And although the, I don't think the government took enough notice of what I said, they keep calling me back to advise them. Let me tell, <laughs> let me, let me tell you something about the current national curriculum. So are you ready for a shock? Yes. Here we go. Okay, and I wrote it, so I should know what I'm talking about, though I didn't agree with it. I was one of the people who was behind it. Uh, there's no requirement to teach any single specific event or personality from British history in the current national curriculum. Let me, re let me say that again. There's no requirement to teach any specific event or personality. So you don't have to teach Churchill. You don't have to teach World War II. No <laughs> Nelson or Wellington. None of that's compulsory. No what history the, required then, necessarily. Well, what it says, you've got to teach British history, but you, you really can choose what you like. They recommend certain topics. So they say, for example, they say uh, th these are non-statutory uh, topics which you might want, to, might want to teach. And that does include World War II, but it's voluntary. And it, actually, we did a survey to find out what, sub what topics teachers are choosing to teach on British history in, for example, the Victorian in the 19th century. And what we found is that, aside from Queen Victoria, the most popular topic appears to be Jack the Ripper. And that, that's <laughs> the best. If you, if you go onto the internet and put, on the, put in TES, Times Education Supplement, you'll see hundreds of model lessons on Jack the Ripper. So we're not teaching Nelson, nor Wellington, nor Churchill, nor Gladstone, nor Disraeli, spending a lot of time on Jack the Ripper, because, kids think, because teachers think that's really sensational and exciting. So we are robbing our children of a sense of national identity. I'm not going to blow a trumpet for Donald Trump. I don't think history is a vehicle for teaching patriotism, nor is it teaching a vehicle for teaching self-hatred. And, and, there's, and there's a problem here because we spend a lot of time in schools these days teaching about, for example, um, black history, which is important. But I mean, for example, one of the issues at the moment is some teachers, a lot of teachers say, there were black legionaries in the, in the Roman army which came here, and children don't learn about that. Well, they should learn about that, but they should also learn that those black legionaries were here in Britain as an army of occupation, enforcing enslavement, and that we had an African emperor, Septimius Severus, who died in York and who ordered the total extermination of everybody north of Hadrian's Wall. That's, a, that's the other side of black history. So therefore, by all means, teach black history, but don't imagine that black people are different from white people. They're just as good and just as bad. And that's true of slavery. So Trump's making a, an important point about teaching a sense of identity in America. But the more you know about American history or British history, the more you realize that human beings are human beings. They, they do the same thing. There are a million white slaves, for example. How many children know that? There was a huge collaboration between Africans in West Africa and the British when we exported slaves to America. Now, you know, people are people, they do vile things, and, and whites and blacks are just the same, and therefore we need a rounded picture of history. And I do think, you know, most parents would say, let the kids learn about church, or let them learn about World War II, warts and all. The Battle of Britain was commemorated a couple of days ago. Well, we need to know what the Battle of Britain was, you know. And, and actually, interesting enough, in the national curriculum, there is a requirement to teach uh, world history. So you, you are required to teach either the West West African history or Islamic well, history. Chris, what, what, history. So why, you why, can I just say, well, why, why is there uh, no requirement to teach any events or individuals from history, but there is a requirement to teach kids about uh, LGBT same-sex relationships? Yeah, this is, this is an interesting one, isn't it, really? Because these are very sensitive issues. And I think that the curriculum's become very politicised. Now, the LGBT, the, L, the LGBT side of things is important. Of course, children should know about LGBT issues. But you have to... There's two things we need to respect. One is that there are groups in society 
uh, and around the world who actually are unsympathetic to LGBT. And the question becomes then, do we respect the point of view? For example, I'm a Catholic. In the Catholic Catechism, it says that sex, uh, homosexual activity uh, condemns you to hell, to mortal sin. Now, I actually think I'm pretty tolerant of plenty of homosexual friends, but, I, you know, that, that is part of the Catholic faith. Um, there are real problems. We're talking to children about the, the World Cup next year or two years' time in Qatar. If you go to Qatar and you're homosexual, you can be executed. Now, do we teach to children, do we teach to children, this is the point of view of the people in Qatar, or most of Africa, in fact, Qatar's in the Middle East, of course, uh, and, but they don't know, they're uncivilised, they don't know what to do. There's a real problem with teaching LGBT issues because we should teach it in a balanced way. So we should support the LGBT community. We should be absolutely tolerant, but we must also teach children that they're, they're not bad people in Africa just because they're much less tolerant than we are. They're not somehow uncivilised and inferior. People around the world have a different point of view. So by all means, teach the LGBT agenda or curriculum, but teach it the whole thing and explain why it is that most of Africa and many parts of the world, many religions are less tolerant and why there are, in fact, dangers if you are uh, gay and you, you turn up in Qatar in the World Cup. Our schools... Uh, imposing on our children a kind of woke orthodoxy. They are. They're brainwashing kids. But not only are the, are the schools brainwashing the children, the teacher training colleges are brainwashing the, teacher, the, the, the student teachers. You cannot get into teacher training these days unless you pass effectively a, a test. It's not a written test, but an interview test in which your views are woke and on message. I mean, what, what, I taught for 35 years. I was a head teacher. I taught in big comprehensive schools. I taught in small private schools. I've got a lot of experience. I would never get a job now. And yet when I was a head teacher, I had nine applications to every single place in my school. I had kids and parents breaking down the door to get their kids taught in my school. I think I was a highly successful teacher, but I wouldn't get a look in there because my views are not woke. But actually, I think my views are sensible and are tolerant. Look, teach the whole picture. If you're going to teach this, this uh, colonial uh, story, if you're going to teach about LGBT, teach the whole picture, prepare our children for the real world. And the real world isn't as it always is in North London. It's different. There's things going on around the world which are different. So tell kids that actually there is a whole world and there are different views and we need to be tolerant. The person who's my hero is Nelson Mandela. He's the, my hero because he was the person who turned up at the Rugby World Cup final a few years ago and he put on the shirt of the spring box. He put on the symbol of apartheid and he did it because he knew unless you embrace the other side, there is no hope. Love your enemy. That's the it, hardest thing. It's the hardest thing to do. Is but this? That's what we need is to this? Do. A, but isn't this something of a scandal that we're only teaching our kids the woke side of the story at the expense of other areas of knowledge, uh, prioritizing that they learn about same-sex relationships while not really teaching them about history? This is something of a disgrace, isn't it? It's distorting the past. When, once you say you're going to use history as a vehicle for teaching LGBT issues or even black issues, you're going to choose topics in history which lend themselves to that particular idea, that particular issue. So, of course, you're going to distort history. I mean, what was the, so we say, the black dimension or the LGB dimension at the signing of Magna Carta? Now, we don't say we, don't, we won't include Magna Carta because we didn't have an LGBT issue, but there's a tendency for teachers to look for issues which, which relate to the LGBT side of things. We're distorting our our, our, our history by this. But look, what I'm telling you, you understand, the ministers won't talk about it. If Michael Gove doesn't want to debate this with me, he glares at me when he sees me these days because he thinks, look, I'm telling the truth. And it's highly embarrassing. You've got David Cameron. He was the prime minister when I was advising Gove. He, he, you know, he's someone who turns up and condemns the Labour Party for not singing the national anthem, whereas he's not allowing in the schools for the Battle of Britain to be taught. He's allowing it, but not, not, not requiring it. Huge hypocrisy, incredibly embarrassing. Ask a minister, get your Secretary of State, get Gavin on here, Gavin Williams, and ask him, why don't kids have to learn about the World War II? And yeah. they, he'll say, well, they probably do. Yeah, but they don't have to. There's probably a few yeah, other, th probably a few other things I'd like to ask uh, Ga Gavin Williamson uh, as well. Are. Yeah, uh, Chris, uh, fantastic to talk. Run out of time. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Chris McGovern. There, campaign for real education.